Hello everybody, good morning, hello, hello. Um, I'm here in my studio in London, which is where I work, and um, I thought I'd just talk to you about some of the things that uh, I think about when I'm alone and how I get inspiration from uh, things that are around me. I'm so fascinated by stuff. If you could see this room, you'd be either horrified or delighted, I'm not sure what, but it's got things which are kitchens, things which are beautiful and things that have no value other than my personal uh, value, the value of them to me personally. But one of the things I've always loved is, uh, is graphic design and uh, how things are designed. And one of the things I adore is postage stamps. And uh, I've got a huge collection of stamps one of the things I find fascinating is the power of the repeated image. When you get the same, the same image over and over again, I think it's absolutely fantastic. You know, when you go down to a, the railway station, uh, the, met the metro or the underground, and you see the advertising and you see one, it looks quite good, but when you see them all exactly the same, it's so powerful. Anyway, that's not really the point. The point is that... Um, um, Stamps, I think, often are obviously to do with the, the people in charge of the country, the Queen, the King, or whatever, or they're to do with the sporting events or um, the character of the, of the country. Graphic design, uh, such a tiny, tiny little piece of paper. So what I did was I created uh, my own stamps, which were never produced they were just stamps for fabric and uh, they were completely uh, made up they weren't they weren't real this one actually has a our shop in Los Angeles on it but the rest are just uh, playful images which then became uh, a shirt um, a dress um, a lining and that just literally came by one day spotting uh, this book just over here and thinking actually that would make a brilliant print so that was it color and stripes are something that i've used a lot i started as a designer for men which is where we tend to use quite a lot of stripes for shirts ties um, socks of course um, and then more recently uh, scarves and then when I started to design clothes for women the stripes became uh, um, important for a shirt dress or a shirt and and so many many people when they create their stripes uh, they use the computer if you use the computer then uh, it's it's good and, uh, but you're very reliant on the quality of your printer, the, the, the ink, uh, and obviously the, all, the, all the things you use have got to be of the top, top quality. But the one thing it doesn't do is that obviously if you're using um, yarn uh, for knitwear, for ties, shirts, yarn is three-dimensional, so the colours reflect on each other. So if you've got a, a, a blue there and a white there, it will give a, the white a bit of blue because it will reflect on it. Or if you put two very clashing colours together, uh, then they will, they will f fight more. So, the, so many, many years ago, when I first started, in fact, when I was in my 20s um, and I was designing fabric for shirting, Right from the beginning, I always uh, used a very traditional method, which is where you use uh, yarns, um, and then you take take some card, and then you take some of the yarn, and then you wind, wind the yarn around. That way, you get uh, beautiful uh, combinations of colors, and you can see how they react to each other. So this is one of my newer ones, which I love. 
and the, the, the colours, more muted colours, more sophisticated colours. And then if you actually look, that's all yarn that is wrapped around uh, the white card. Oddly enough, guess what they're called? Wrappings. Uh, and it's a, it's a method that um, uh, we've used uh, really right since I started. Many of the things we do in the studio downstairs uh, are still uh, quite traditional. So, so we still hand paint. Um, not always, of course we use the computer, but we still hand paint. Uh, we still cut out, we still collage. We still silk screen print and uh, we still do these things which are called wrappings. It's fascinating, amazing. It's very creative and it's very therapeutic. One of the things I thought I'd talk to you about is photography. Um, I started uh, taking photographs when I was 11 because my father bought me this uh, lovely old Kodak retinet camera and one of the beautiful things about that was that first of all it was film uh, my dad was an amateur photographer um, found a member of the local camera club just outside of nottingham in england the thing about uh, taking photographs with these cameras is that you use something called a, a viewfinder and you have to really get the shot perfect uh, because it's film you're not going to see it until you develop it it was expensive um, and only when you get into the dark room and then put the chemicals in and develop the film that you see the image. So it was really important to set up the shot. Nowadays, of course, we have the, the telephone and we take lots of pictures, delete, delete, delete. But then it was a very different uh, way of thinking about things. And I honestly think that's one of the reasons why I've managed to be able to teach myself to look and see and that's where most of my inspiration comes from looking and seeing so it could be a book it could be anything um, recently um, found a box of my uh, my dad's pictures photographs and uh, I, I thought that they would be interesting to to photographically print onto fabric uh, I used also some of my own photographs. Uh, uh, this is some of the fabric that we that we actually printed. I'm not sure whether you can see it, uh, but uh, that's a photograph of the the famous uh, Duomo in uh, in Florence. Uh, then there's there's pictures of uh, tomatoes, various things that then ended up being dresses, shirts, coats in our fashion show. Uh, some of the photographs were um, what they call colour slides and they'd faded over the years and, and some of the colours actually that we've printed are the colours that the photographs actually were. So not always prints, sometimes what they call transparencies. And so some of them were these wonderful washed out pinks and things like that. The other thing that my dad was, uh, he was, he, he was got a good sense of humour and he, uh, he liked playing with negatives, so he would get get two or three negatives and put them together when uh, he was working in the dark room with the uh, enlarger. So put the negatives together, say you might get a picture of an apple tree, and then he thought, oh, I quite like a bird in there, so he'd have another photograph of a bird and put them together, and that would end up being uh, the way he did things. One day I arrived home from school, and... Uh, I think I was about 10 or 11 or something like that. And I looked in the back garden and there was uh, some wooden boxes and a rug which had been wired at the edge and bent. Uh, a sheet from my parents' bed on the washing line as a backdrop. And I said, oh, what's that, Dad? He said, oh, um, sit, on, sit on that and pretend you're flying. I said, why? I've got my homework to do. He said, oh, it won't take a minute, won't take a minute. And uh, this was the, this is, was the final, <laughs> the final effort, which is Brighton Pavilion in the south of England, and me in the back garden, putting the two negatives together, and me flying uh, over Brighton Pavilion. He did lots of tabletop photography and everything. So, using that as an idea, we uh, use this, which is 
one photograph I took in uh, Palm Springs and one photograph my father took of a parachutist at an air show and putting the two uh, the two negatives together and uh, getting a, a great image. So through finding a box of uh, my father's photographs and thinking and knowing my, my trade, knowing that one particular factory in Italy could print uh, these photographic prints quite uh, quite accurately uh, and just thinking how we use them together and on what product we use them which was mostly for a fashion show because obviously most of us wear simple clothes and not uh, clothes which are so extreme as these but it ended up being really really successful this is a book called The Dreamer of Dreams by the Queen of Romania, but illustrated by somebody who I'm a great fan of called Edmund Dulac. It's a quite precious, precious book uh, I was given. Um, I think it's a first edition. It's got these wonderful illustrations in it, which are put into the book loose. And they have got this wonderful uh, dreamlike quality based on the title of the book so all these little mysterious settings which i was very influenced by and obviously as somebody who's brought up in the 60s in uh, that whole dreamlike hippie love and love and uh, yeah love and hippie era of psychedelia and dreaming I, I i felt that this book was something that uh, was very much of, of my my time and uh and so uh with the team downstairs in in, uh, in print textile design uh we designed a, a print called the dreamer but also then we were fantastically excited because we managed to get the print uh as as a jacquard now this fabric is uh, this is the, the Dreamer uh, Jacquard. Now, what is a Jacquard? It means it's, it took actually five days just to set it up on the machine. Um, and it's, uh, it's got the spirit of the book about it, about the, the haunted forest, about the mystical animals, about the sun set or the sunrise, uh, the little frogs, the dragonflies, and that became a jacket, for instance, with a zip up the front. Uh, but also we did prints for shirts, dresses. And uh, that came from this one, one book, which I saw upon my shelf over there. And uh, became the, the actual name and, and character uh, of a whole collection. So through one book, uh, we got a whole collection. In auctions, which are uh, often in uh, the south, well, in Lyon or uh, in the, the Italy near the, the Como area, the Milan area of Italy, um, there are often auctions of beautiful old uh, fabric books. They're in those areas because uh, Lyon was famous uh, and still is, in fact, for um, printed fabrics. And, and so is uh, Como and that area of, uh, around, in Italy, around the lakes. Um, some of the books that I've managed to uh, buy over the years, which are now, unfortunately, very, very costly, um, uh, often are just oozing with inspiration. And, and they're, they're, they're books that have been used by the mills um, where they've created this fabric and then kept uh, the various colorways uh, as what we call swatches. And uh, some of the color combinations, and uh, in this case, uh, the, the way it's uh, jacquard embroidery um, and then the, the color palette are just uh, magnificent. So I have a lot of these books, which I find really, really inspiring. And one of the things that's also interesting is um, I've been buying them not just from uh, France and Italy, but also from Japan. And uh, suddenly, when you look at the Japanese ones, they do really feel like they are 
Japanese. So it's quite interesting how a country can have an, an actual uh, influence in its imagery which is used on uh, textile designs. And these books obviously are just fantastic. The colour combinations and the methods of, of printing or the type of printing are often really, really uh, a, a great influence. I'd like to talk to you about uh, a Japanese graphic designer, Iko Tanaka. Um, I was privileged uh, enough uh, to, to meet him one time in, on my visits to Japan. Uh, sadly, he passed away uh, now, uh, but I, I always loved his work. Actually, um, he worked a lot with um, the uh, Japanese designer uh, Issey Miyake, but also many other uh, designers as well. His, his main talent for me, uh, and why I'm actually showing you his work, is because I'm quite well known for my colour. I like, I like to use colour, I find colour very optimistic. I mean, it doesn't have to be colour, it could be sometimes just a hint of colour. Um, on, like on this sweater, there's a, just a little colour at the back here. Uh, so it could be a navy blue sweater with just a little bit of colour. But the, as you probably know, we're quite famous for our striped fabrics. Um, it's very much about what colours you put together. And uh, this book was given to me uh, by, by uh, Mr Tanaka. And it's just a, a book of solid colours of paper. And the way he's put them together is really, really fantastic and very fascinating. And when you look at uh, a, that colour there, for instance, when it's sitting next to this colour, it looks very nice, very clashing in colour. Then you turn it over and it's next to an orange. It's the same colour, but you put it there and suddenly it takes on a new lease of life. So some of the colours are amazing. So you put one next to another, that's the same colour. But by putting it near a similar colour, it takes on a different feeling to when you put it from a pale colour. So this book has been so fantastic for me. Can you imagine when you're doing the famous uh, striped socks or when you're doing the combination of here we've got a, a black, a uh, turquoise and a blue as a sock. So those are colours which are very similar tones to each other. But if you put a, a blue and a white together, it's a very fresh colour. If you put an orange and a red together, or a turquoise and a blue together, they're colours which are similar tone and they really fight with each other. And, to, and send out a different message. Let's say that one is very fresh and very light and full of air. And the other one is Andy Warhol, a club. What I found really fascinating about uh, being in this room uh, with a bit more time on my hands uh, is going through some of my wonderful things I've got here, especially books, uh, memorabilia, vinyl, all those amazing covers in that big format. It's just been so inspirational, fantastic. And um, you probably uh, heard me say it before, but you can find inspiration in anything, and uh, if you if you can't, please look again. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for looking, and uh, stay safe. Bye. Bye.